Welcome back to the Grateful Ducks podcast. I am your host, Brewhand Luke. Today is Sunday, August 25th, 25th, Sunday, August 25th. And on today's episode, we're talking all things ACC. We're going to do an ACC season preview. And we also have some college football week zero stuff to discuss. Speaking of the ACC, because we had three teams in action from the ACC this weekend with Florida State and Georgia Tech taking on each other in, from Dublin, Ireland. And boy, do we have a lot to talk about from that big game and that Georgia Tech upset. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. And we also had SMU in action, new ACC team, SMU against Nevada in Nevada. We will talk about that in just a few minutes. And then from there, we're going to go into the rest of the ACC. We'll preview the rest of that ACC season, and we'll talk about what we have moving forward from there. So let's just start out with uh, the Week Zero performances from the ACC. I know there were other games that were going on, but the biggest storylines from Week Zero was was the ACC teams. Um, Starting out, the first game of the year came out with a bang and Boy, did they really make a statement about how awesome this sport of college football truly is. Um, Georgia Tech, 24. Florida State, 21. Aiden Burr with a 44-yard field goal as time expired to win the game for Georgia Tech in Dublin. Um, Who boy. Barn burner. I said in a uh, tweet that I didn't think that Georgia Tech could hang with Florida State for the entire game because Florida State just has more talent. Um, Shout out to Brent Key and Georgia Tech for having a great game plan. Uh, The matchups were tailor-made for this Georgia Tech offense and the defense. We'll talk about Florida State in just a second and their offensive performances. But uh, Tyler Santucci and the Georgia Tech, new look Georgia Tech defense, really threw in a lot of different looks that Florida State could not really figure out. Um, And that made a big difference in the game. They were bringing heat when they needed to. Uh, They were getting the big stops on the run plays when they needed to. A little bit of alarming on that opening series when Florida State just drove down the field and Georgia Tech was kind of just looking like spectators on defense and Myself included, thought, well, this is going to be a long day for Georgia Tech. They made the adjustments right away, and each series following really knew what to expect from Florida State. But that first series was um, the outlook was not great for Georgia Tech. Um, the offense, as expected, with Haynes King, Jamal Haynes got the job done. Haynes King has a history of turning the ball over. And he almost fumbled and coughed it up twice, which would have been a big difference in the game. Um, But fortunately for Georgia Tech, they recovered those fumbles and it did not cost them uh, the game or any key situations that led to scores for Florida State in those moments in the fourth quarter. Um, So big, big props to Brent Key and Georgia Tech. They gave Florida State everything they could handle. They come out with the win, and Georgia Tech and Brent Key are now 5-0 and against ranked ACC opponents. Um, Florida State, this is not a good look for the ACC. That's what I'll say. Um, and we'll talk about SMU shortly, speaking of not a good look for the ACC. But when you are favored – by you open with as a 14 point favorite, and then you are a 10 and a half point favorite on a neutral site. Let's call it if they were at home instead of a neutral site, seven to eight point favorite. And now you lose the game as one of the preseason favorites to win the ACC. The way your season ended last year to come out and perform the way you did. You still have a strong front four on the defensive line. And they could not solve this Georgia Tech style of play. The the defense was what I was more confident in 
going into the season to think that they would have what it takes to keep them in the games and the offense would do just enough. Um, they've got some work to do on defense. Next week, this defense now sees Boston College in Tallahassee. The issue being that Boston College's style of offense is very similar to Georgia Tech. Haynes King, mobile quarterback. Florida State has problems with mobile quarterbacks over these last season and this season. Um, Thomas Castellanos, Boston College quarterback, dual threat quarterback, runs the ball a lot, was one of uh, Boston College's leading rushers last year at, from the quarterback position. Florida State's going to have to get back into the film room and figure thing, need to figure things out and make adjustments there in order to, one, make sure this is not a close game, but two, just win the game. Uh, the Florida State offense, DJU does not look to be that guy. Yeah, they have Roy Dell Williams. They have a strong running game, but DJU is looking like the guy from previous seasons, big arm, but same little thing, short little bubble screens, doesn't throw down field, doesn't throw the deep ball when he can. He isn't the guy that I think everybody was hoping he would be. Like former five-star quarterback at Clemson, transfers to Oregon State, was good enough at Oregon State. But now you're back in the ACC at Florida State. And they might have a quarterback problem. There could come a point in time where if this continues to be an issue where they make a change. It's going to take a while to make a change because he's getting the NIL money that he came to Florida State for. So they aren't just going to pull the plug on him very quickly. Um, we will talk more as I, I have a breakdown of all the ACC teams. I'll talk a little bit more about Florida State and Georgia Tech. But if Florida State already has one loss on their schedule, then we got to play out the rest of the season. Let's say they lose again. Now they are dash two in the regular season. Maybe they're good enough to make the ACC championship as a two loss team. But then they got to win the ACC championship game. Because if you lose the ACC championship game and now you're dash three, the ACC suddenly looks like they are getting only one playoff team. Speaking of the ACC, Let's move on to SMU. SMU 29, Nevada 24. SMU was a 27-point favorite on the road at Nevada. And Nevada gave them everything they could, showed them a lot of different looks on offense, brought the heat, and really stepped up on defense. Uh, SMU quarterback Preston Stone really was very inconsistent, which led to some breaks for Nevada. Nevada was leading this game 17-14, I believe, at halftime. Uh, and it came down to a game-winning drive with a minute left on the clock uh, by the time that SMU scored to seal the deal for at, for the uh, Mustangs. That shouldn't happen. So between Florida State losing and SMU needing to squeak out a win against Nevada, who... Nevada is projected as like their win total is, I think, two or three, depending on where you look for uh, their projected win totals for the year. Year one under Jeff Choate. Jeff Choate is one hell of a coach, a little bit biased. He's a former Eastern Illinois special teams coach. Uh, he's a proven winner, though. He built Montana State into a FCS contender was at Texas last year as a co-defensive coordinator and linebackers coach. He'd been there for a number of years, had played, obviously, in the um, semifinal game last year in the college football playoff as a coach. So he knows how to prepare his players, and that showed. So I don't want to discredit Nevada at all. But SMU, who some think can contend for the ACC championship as well, really is taking a step back. now. This could be just some week one jitters, try to sort some things out. If SMU and Nevada were playing 
let's say in week 10 or week 11, and if Florida State and Georgia Tech were playing in week 10 and week 11, maybe that offense for both SMU and Florida State start to figure things out and they gel a little bit more. But right now, both teams have a lot to work on. Not a very good look for the ACC, which I believe could get two teams in. This also really opens the door for some other teams. Virginia Tech, Miami, who haven't played a game yet, but they're already behind the eight ball and looking better than those two teams that have performed or lack of performance, if we want to be honest. So the ACC really did themselves zero favors. <laughs> Week zero, zero favors with the performances there. Did Georgia Tech have a hell of a game against Florida State? Yes. But I also think Georgia Tech, they'll win a bowl game. They're going to give some teams fits, but they also sometimes perform up to their their opponents and also kind of play down to their opponents as well when they have a weaker opponent. So they need to prove that they could be an eight or nine win team this season, uh, not just a bowl game contender um, before I could even say they're going to be an ACC contender. But they definitely looked really damn good. And things are looking very encouraging for Georgia Tech. Now, the rest of the ACC needs to step up. Because if they all beat up on each other, it's just going to look like the Big 12, what everybody's anticipating for the Big 12 with just one playoff team. And then the ACC gets one playoff team. And then that opens the door for a Big 10 or SEC to get a potential fifth team. And then you got your group of five team. So we'll see how things shake out. It's very early in the season. Um, Florida State's offense has a lot of time to figure things out, but it's not a good start. And especially not a good start for SMU, who's first year in the ACC. If they're struggling with Nevada and now they have to down the road play an ACC schedule, um, I feel more encouraged or more optimistic that SMU. More, excuse me, more optimistic that Florida State can figure things out, less optimistic that SMU is going to be a legitimate championship game contender. That being said, let's get to the rest of the ACC with our ACC season preview for everybody else. Uh, looking at the graphic here, SMU, first year in the ACC, as we discussed, there's also Cal and Stanford now, leaving the uh, Pac-12. They go to the ACC. Boy, will we talk about that. The travel there, um, coast to coast, week in and week out at some points. Uh, it affects the East Coast teams as well. Um, on the graphic down there, you see Notre Dame. Ignore that. That's uh, <laughs> They're not an ACC football team. Uh, they play a lot of ACC opponents. Let's just uh, let's pretend like that's not there. And let's get to the, let's get to the teams. So the first one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to break down the ACC championship contenders or who should be ACC championship game contenders, which also put them in the playoff conversation. Because if you're going to win the ACC championship, you're in the playoff with a bye. If you lose the ACC championship game, different story. So we start out with the Clemson Tigers. There's Dabo. There's the crew touching Howard's Rock before they take the field. Um, down year, hypothetically speaking, for Clemson standards last year. Um, it was the first year since, let's see, first time in 12 years that Clemson did not win 10 games was last season. Uh, got off to a rough start, and then the second half of the season, they really got the on a hot streak and finished the on a high note um, thing about Clemson, as a lot of people might know, um, Dabo Sweeney does not like to use a transfer portal, which a lot of people said potentially could have been a reason why they were struggling last year in their down years is Clemson has Clemson seen their better days or are they on the downswing or are they going to bounce back now and be another 10 win or greater Went greater team. Uh, they're going to have double digit wins again. My thing is, I would predict that they will go get back to winning um, double digit in the double digits for next season. 
Uh, second year under Garrett Riley. Uh, Garrett Riley with this offense now as the offensive coordinator uh, has another year under his belt with Cade Klubnick. We don't know if Cade Klubnick's Cade Klubnick is the guy if he's going to be that stud that people are anticipating, the one that replaced DJ Uwangalale. Um, maybe he replaced DJU because DJU just wasn't that good, as we saw in his uh, performance week zero for Florida State. Um, they had a lot of injury issues last year. They have depth at wide receiver if they could stay healthy. They have a very good wide receiver. What else is new? That's Clemson football for you. Uh, they also bring in two five-star freshman wide receivers that could make an impact for them. Uh, and also, the other concern, the reason why Clemson was so successful in previous years was not just because of how good that offense was, but they always had a dominant defense. Um, Brent Venables left to be the, become the head coach at Oklahoma. This is now year two without Brent Venables. And I have more concerns about Clemson's defense bouncing back in year two than I do about the offense. I feel like, feel like the offense will be okay. The defense is where there could be come some struggles where they might, instead of being a 10 or 11 win team could revert back to another eight or nine wins, but more likely than not, they should bounce back, be playing in the ACC championship game. If things go as planned. So let's just take a quick look at their schedule again, week one against Georgia. Uh, Georgia is currently listed as a 14 point favorite. I don't anticipate that line moving much unless injuries start to, uh, in unless there's injury news coming up. So that's this coming Saturday, uh, props to Clemson props to Georgia for scheduling a power five, non-conference opponent. Um, very, very high on Georgia preseason ranked number one. I just don't think Clemson can hang with them. Uh, that 14 point number seems accurate. It might grow i think that's going to be a greater than a 14 point victory for georgia uh they have a chip on their shoulder from not making the playoff last year uh moving down some other challenging games for clemson that could um uh, throw a wrench in their plan i mean at florida state the road game they're they only lost that game last year to florida state on a uh, game-winning field goal in overtime they're looking for revenge for that home loss last year to Florida State. And the way Florida State performed this past week, it's looking more and more encouraging for Clemson. Now, come October, Florida State might be a better team than they are right now. Uh, at Virginia Tech, we'll get to Virginia Tech, but I think going to Virginia Tech on November 9th is going to be potentially, potentially, an ACC championship game preview. Uh, but you look at everything else, they don't play Miami. You get Louisville at home. Uh, you've got NC State at home. We'll talk about NC State. But the schedule is pretty fav favorable after that Georgia game uh, where they could get on a little bit of a roll. And then that November 9th matchup against Virginia Tech really could be the game, the game of the week or the game of the year in the ACC until the ACC championship game. We'll talk about Virginia Tech shortly. Okay, so moving on. Florida State, the defending ACC champions. We already talked a lot about Florida State. Obviously, losing Jordan Travis, you can see the difference between the offense with and without Jordan Travis. That showed this past week. Um, defensive line, I bought into the hype for that D-line, and they just did not show it. Uh on Saturday, maybe they'll improve, maybe with more reps and more experience. Those are first and second round NFL draft picks in the, in the front four there with Marvin Jones Jr. Uh, leading that group there. And they didn't really look the part. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Like I have a lot of questions about moving forward. Where do you go from here? How do you improve and make these adjustments with what you have coming up on the schedule? Uh, the running game, they have a lot of depth in the running game. I mean, they did lose Trey Benson, but they, you still got Roy Dell Williams there uh, at running back, and they were running the ball down Georgia Tech's throat. Then Georgia Tech was like, all right, we got this. But you look at the schedule. Again, Georgia Tech, they already got one loss on the schedule, and it's a conference loss. Talked about that Boston College game already. Uh, the non-conference game against Memphis in Week 3 is intriguing. I really think that Memphis – has a very le legitimate chance 
to win the American Conference and be the group of five selection to make the playoffs. Whether or not I believe a group of five team belongs in the playoffs is a different story. If you notice the top 25 rankings preseason, there's not a single group of five team ranked in the top 25 preseason. Um, but that's the way the format lays out, and there's going to be a group of five team in the playoff one way or the other, and they will most likely get blown out in that first game in the playoff against whoever they play. Uh, but Memphis is a very good team. So they, I mean, they get Memphis at home. They get Cal at home. That should be a win. Florida State at SMU. And then you've got that, you got the Clemson game at home. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm a lot more down in Florida State now than I was two days ago. Uh, the Notre Dame game, you got to go to Notre Dame in November. That might help Florida State with the fact that they could be playing a lot better football at the end of the year, but you can't have any slip ups before then. You've got one loss on your schedule already, and then you're playing a Boston College team that you only beat 31 to 29 last year. And you've got to go to SMU. SMU doesn't look the part. I think it's going to be a big advantage for Florida State being uh, SMU has to make more adjustments to being in the conference. But then you got Clemson October 5th. That could be a loss. You got to go to Miami. So then you're going to Notre Dame. You could only afford to lose one more game down the stretch here and then hope that you're in the ACC championship game with as a uh, two loss team, and then you have to win the ACC championship. Because if you're a two loss team going to the ACC championship, like I said, and then you lose that game, 10 and three Florida State will not be making the playoff based off of how the ACC performed in week zero and what I'm seeing from the ACC. Really, really <laughs> impacted the whole playoff outlook right off the bat before we get to all the teams kick it off in week one did not expect that next we got the U and mario cristobal oh boy potentially the best quarterback of the conference cam ward transferring in from washington state uh previously was at incarnate word with gj kinney as their head coach who ran a very high powered offense he's moved on since to texas state to be the head coach cam ward looked okay at Washington State last year. At times, he looked like an unbeatable quarterback who could have been a Heisman Trophy candidate. Other times, he looked very vulnerable, uh, didn't really fit the air raid motto of a Washington State style of team. Uh, the problem here is Mario Cristobal. They've got all the talent in the world. But what has Mario Cristobal done in years past as head coach? not listen to his offensive coordinator, not listen to his defensive coordinator. Decision-making, in-game decision-making has cost his teams so many games. Game planning has cost his team's wins. Um, year one at Oregon, Pac-12 champions. Then you go to the Pac-12 championship game against Utah. He might have been checked out and already knew that he was on the way out taking the Miami job. Regardless, his game plan was horseshit against Utah, and Utah ran all over them. Um, also brought in Damian Martinez, running back from Oregon State. Uh, so between Cam Moore, Damian Martinez, strong offensive line. Uh, Simeon Barrow leads the defensive line. Uh, another very high-powered D-line that could stop almost any team in the country. Um but breaking down their schedule, again, let's take a look. Open in the rivalry game in-state against Florida. Currently, they are a two-and-a-half-point favorite against Florida in Gainesville. I talked about Florida in the SEC preview. They have the toughest schedule in the country, and it starts this Saturday. I personally would not be shocked if Florida pulled off the upset, especially after what we saw last week. Uh, Billy Napier has had all offseason to prepare for Mario Cristobal. Mario Cristobal, same thing. He's had all offseason to prepare for Florida. But I think people are underestimating what Florida and Graham Mertz can do in year two under Billy Napier. Uh, 
You get Louisville at home. The Virginia Tech game will be on a Friday night at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. That's not really a home field advantage, though. I mean, nobody goes to Miami games. How many football, how many games, uh, or how many fans go to Miami Hurricane football games? Look at the crowds there. It's not a huge advantage. So then you have Florida State. The way Florida State performed again, we got to look at that. Come October 26, maybe a much improved team, but they get Florida State at home. Again, it's going to be a Florida State heavy crowd. You get Duke at home. That should be a win. We'll talk about Duke shortly. Uh, Georgia Tech, neutral site, quote unquote, neutral site in Atlanta. You saw what Georgia Tech did, and you saw that Brent Key is 5 0 against ranked ACC opponents. Georgia Tech seems to be giant slayers. You got to watch out for that game late in the year. Um, we'll see with health wise where Georgia Tech is and Miami is at that point in the year. And the last two games against Wake Forest and Syracuse should be wins. But with Florida State losing week zero and SMU having to battle down to the wire against Nevada week zero, Miami is looking more and more like a heavy favorite to win the ACC. Um, But first things first, you got to get by Florida in the non-con schedule uh, to be considered a playoff contender, let alone an ACC contender. Uh, if you got the if you got a weaker Florida team, but an SEC team against Miami, I'm going to lean towards the SEC team. I think that Virginia Tech game is going to be tougher than people think. I think Virginia Tech is going to pull that off. For being honest, um, the rest of the way, though, I mean, you're talking a two loss team, maybe three, but right there to win the ACC. Moving on. This is the team I'm most excited about in the ACC, Virginia Tech. They returned 10 starters on offense, 11 starters on defense. This man right here, number one, Kyron Drones. Year two in the Virginia Tech offense. They returned the entire offensive line. Um, If you look at the progressions of uh, head coach Brett Pry here, uh, year one, three and eight. Year two, seven and six. Um, Just slowly... I mean, it's only a two-year frame, but now year three, and then you have Kyron Drones now in year two here under this system. Another dual threat mobile quarterback that could do a lot of things. A little bit of a sleeper to win the Heisman. I don't think he wins the Heisman. I've got others. I got another sleeper pick we'll talk about in the Big 12 preview and a future play that I put in for the Heisman. We won't get there today, but, I mean, you look at Florida State's schedule, and they got one of the toughest places to play, Florida State, Virginia Tech schedule. You're looking at 4 0 going into the game against Miami on the September 27th. Uh, that's again, it's a Friday night game at Miami. Stanford has to travel all the way across the country. Then you've got Boston College. Careful with that Georgia Tech game. Again, could be a trap game. You have to win that game. That looks like it's. At home, so that should be a huge advantage still. Georgia Tech on the road against Virginia Tech could be a long day for Georgia Tech, despite what we saw already in Dublin, Ireland. Um, Then you got Syracuse. Very possible, looking at this schedule, that Virginia Tech is undefeated going into that Clemson game. It would not surprise me at all. And then you got Duke and Virginia to end the year. One loss, Virginia Tech. And the ACC championship game, if they lose the ACC championship game and they are 11 and 1 going into the game, and now they lose, will an 11 and 2 Virginia Tech make the playoffs? I would say yes. No Florida State on this schedule. Other than that, I mean, Miami and Clemson, you win one of those two games. And I see this being a one-loss team going to the ACC championship. I did take Virginia Tech in uh, my future bet. I almost took them to take as uh, to win the ACC at plus one thousand. I like the value better to make the playoff, the college football playoff at plus nine fifty. Still, might put a little bit of money on them to win the ACC championship game. I just really, really like the personnel of this team. I like the quarterback play. 
everybody's hyping Cam Ward at Miami. I really think year two of Kyron Drones at Boss at Virginia Tech is going to be a better team. Next up, SMU. We already touched base on that. Preston Stone here at quarterback. Rhett Lashley, first year in the ACC. Um, they have to play the ACC schedule now, and they when again, like I already talked about this, so we're not going to talk too much on it. You're struggling with Nevada as a 27 point favorite on the road. That shouldn't come down to the last minute of the game. Preston Stone has to be a much better quarterback, and he has to be a better quarterback now playing in the ACC schedule, not a American conference schedule against the two lanes of the world. No, no disrespect to Tulane or UTSA or any of those teams. You're playing with the big dogs now. And the entire team and the coaching staff have to be prepared for that. I just, this high powered offense, where was it against Nevada? Where is it going to be when they play against these ACC teams? Uh, Better be ready to come and play. Next up, Louisville. So Louisville, last year under Jeff Brom, Jeff Brom, first year under Jeff Brom, they were 10 and 2 regular season. Part of that reason was because they had a weaker schedule. It set up great for Jeff Brom. That being said, Coach Brom knows how to get things done. He the year before at Purdue. Played in the Big Ten Championship game. Last year, played Florida State for the Conference Championship game. Almost won that game. Florida State didn't have Jordan Travis, but regardless, they almost were ACC champions in year one under Jeff Brown. Uh, They are strong at defensive line. I don't know if they have enough to win the ACC, let alone play in the ACC championship game this year. They have a little bit more of a challenging schedule, but they will give teams fits. They also, I think, will be lacking a little bit, though, because of they won't have the depth, a little bit of inexperience at quarterback play. They're relying on 19th-year quarterback Tyler Shuck. Not 19th year, but like he's been in college football forever, and he's had issue, issues with injuries and if you're relying on Tyler Shuck and the rest of that room, you're going to struggle in the ACC. Uh, next team up, NC State is an intriguing one. Uh, that's Grayson McCall now at quarterback, former Coastal Carolina quarterback, who has one of the best quotes of all time when he was returning to Coastal Carolina instead of going to the NFL or entering the transfer portal two years ago, said, uh, I pissed Teal. He pisses Teal. My question is, now that he's at NC State, does he piss red? I don't know. But this is probably the best quarterback that NC State has had since Russell Wilson before he transferred to Wisconsin. Uh, There's a lot of hype here. I mean, they've had some good quarterback play in years past with some injury issues. Just hasn't quite been enough. A lot of people think this is a flashy pick for NC State to win the ACC or be in the ACC championship game. I can't personally buy into the hype because I've seen it before with previous seasons under Dave Doran, and they're good, but they're just not good enough. Is Grayson McCall enough to get over the hump to be an ACC championship game contender? I don't I I don't see it. I mean, they have a favorable schedule. They don't play Florida State. They don't play Virginia Tech. They don't play Miami, and they don't play SMU. They could find themselves dodging the heavy hitters in the ACC and maybe like Louisville last year finding their way into the ACC championship game somehow. But then in the ACC championship game, you're are you going to face Clemson or Virginia Tech? Um Miami, all those teams are clearly better than NC State. They're going to go to a good bowl game, I believe. I just can't buy the hype that they are going to be an ACC championship game or contender or a playoff contender. We'll get a lot of answers questions about – wow, boy. Ha! We'll get a lot of questions answered about NC State 
week two in Charlotte, North Carolina against the Tennessee Volunteers. I think it could get ugly. It's a quote-unquote neutral site. I mean, about a two-hour drive for NC State, three or so drive from Knoxville, give or take, maybe four hours. I don't know. It's right around there. But that'll be an interesting game. We'll learn a lot about Tennessee there as well, but I think we're going to learn more about NC State than we will about Tennessee because Tennessee is the better team. Next up, teams that just are not ACC championship contenders. Um, Some are really close to being in that mix. Others, they got a lot of work to do. Uh, So let's rattle through this here. Uh, First up, Georgia Tech. Again, I'm really high on Georgia Tech and this offense. I wasn't uh, I wasn't very sure what to think about um, Georgia Tech's defense, but seeing how Tyler Santucci schemed against Florida State with that new alignment, uh, Tyler Santucci, who was the defensive coordinator at Duke last year, has all that ACC experience under Mike Elko at Duke, and that Duke defense gave so many teams fits, and he's picking up right where he left off. At Georgia Tech now. Could this be the formula Georgia Tech needs to get into that ACC contender mix? We will see. The offense is one of the best offenses in the ACC. We saw that and how hard, how much Florida State struggled. But can they do that every week? You can't have any slip ups. Haynes King reverts to the guy that turns the ball over, throws a lot of interceptions, coughs up the football make some mental errors, and now that Georgia Tech team is just the same old Georgia Tech, and they're playing 500 football. They got to do it week in and week out, and that's why I don't have them as a contender. I really like the upside of this team, but we have to see it more consistently um, as we move on. The Tar Heels, North Carolina. I could have probably put them a little bit lower on the list because – Man, do I have a lot of questions about this team. I really – you lose Drake May. You lose a lot of your star power on offense along with Drake May. Um, The offensive line is kind of getting pieced together. You've got a new defensive coordinator, and I just don't know what to expect from the offense without Drake May. And – their star wide receivers that they had last year and their running back room. And I just, I can't really see them doing a whole lot. The thing that they have again on their schedule, they don't play Miami. They don't play Virginia tech. They don't play Clemson, but looking down the the stretch there, I just, they could be an eight or nine win team or they could be a four-win team. Just It's just a matter of how much this team gels together as the season progresses on offense. It's all about the offense. I'm sure Mac Brown's very optimistic. I'm not. I think if you were going to bet North Carolina's win total, I would go to- more towards the under than I would towards the over, even despite the – weaker schedule, but that there's just so much inexperience. And then you have the new defensive coordinator on top of it, trying to install a new defense. Maybe it helps their defense because it's been so bad in years past. You can't get much worse than what North Carolina's defense was. They were like at LSU and USC in years past, but man, Mac Brown, is this going to be his swan song? If they don't get it done, if they don't make a bowl game, is he going to say, I, I mean, it's been a good run. It's time for me to retire. We'll see what happens. Next, we got the Pitt Panthers. Um, Very much a down year for Pitt last year at three and nine. Uh, That's very unlike Pitt. They have only four starters returning on defense and a lot of experience on offense. The offense will be the show here, high-powered, fast, up-paced, up-tempo offense that you're going to see. They need that offense to win them the games because the inexperience on defense with only four returning starters could cause them a lot of problems. 
if I'm going to bet any pit games, I'm just going to bet the overs based off of their offense and the lack of experience on defense. Now, as the season moves on, maybe their defense improves, and I got to think about taking the unders. But right now, with the way Pitt's offense is and seeing their inexperience on defense, I lean towards the under. Pat Narduzzi, great coach, great defensive mind. If you go three and nine again this year or four and eight, you're on the hot seat. You might not make it to 2025. They need to make a bowl game and they need to win their bowl game. Otherwise, I think we're going to see a lot of changes at Pitt. You don't have Kenny Pickett anymore, who was a Heisman Trophy finalist in this offense two years later. And you don't really have any answers. If you don't have the answers two years later and you can't get creative outside of the Kenny Pickett gem that you had, people are going to be calling for your job. Higher expectations for Pitt. Another new team, Cal. Justin Wilcox has a good returning running back, Jaden Ott. That's who you see in the picture there. One of the top returning running backs in the country, um, kind of like Oklahoma State with Ollie Gordon, but not the hype of an Ollie Gordon. Uh, he will run all over every defense he sees. He will be the key to Cal's success. They will live and die by running the ball with Ollie Gordon. Uh, again, big challenge for Cal is the travel. Traveling all the way across the country to play teams on the East Coast. Then you got to travel back and play at home. It goes both ways. Like if NC State has to go fly all the way out to Berkeley to play Cal, that's going to be a struggle for NC State or Wake Forest or whoever it is on the schedule. But year one in the ACC, on top of all the miles going across the country, back and forth, week in and week out, really could add up. Uh, the offense, again, is going to be the key to the success and the run game. Uh, Justin Wilcox, Oregon Duck alumni, defensive-minded coach, should hopefully have a good scheme and game plan week in and week out for the defense, but they lose a lot on defense, and it's more about the hype on offense this season for Cal. Uh, they need to get back to a bowl game. I think Justin Wilcox is a great coach, and he's just set up in not a very good spot this season with being in the ACC and traveling across the country. It's going to take a year or two to adjust to that. I don't necessarily think he's on the hot seat, but if you underperform and you're a three-win team in the ACC, Cal could easily go and look and say, well, we got to find an ACC mind head coach and make some changes. Syracuse, this is another intriguing one. This is a team that could be another league menace of sorts. Uh, year one under Fran Brown. Dino Babers is out. Fran Brown is in. Former Georgia defensive backs coach. He's from the East Coast. He's from New Jersey. Knows how to recruit. Uh, already landed Kyle McCord in the transfer portal from Ohio State. A lot of people were talking about how Kyle McCord was not very good last year for Ohio State. That's true. He looked very good because of all the wide receivers he had. Leaves Ohio State because he was unsure if he would be the starter. Goes to Syracuse. Probably a much better fit for Kyle McCord at Syracuse than he was at Ohio State. Um, set up to win there in year one under Fran Brown, and he has a couple of years of eligibility left where he can maybe, with some consistency and success in year two, under Fran Brown, do some uh, do some things and do some damage. But for now, it's going to be a struggle. I do think under year one, they can make a, a bowl game and bounce back from uh, the previous years where they underperformed a little bit under Dino Babers. Um, that's enough about Syracuse, though. Let's move on to Wake Forest. Last year was the first time in seven seasons that Wake Forest did not make a bowl game. Wake Forest tends to have a lot of success. Um, in the ACC, they kind of give teams a lot of fits. They haven't had the same success in the quarterback room uh, as they did in years past when they had Sam Hartman. 
Um, and I don't know what they're going to have at quarterback this year. Uh, they got Hank Bachmeyer, who transferred in from Boise State. Should really improve that offense. But it's year one as he transfers in. I don't anticipate them missing out on a bowl game back-to-back seasons. And Dave Clawson, the head coach at Wake Forest, knows what it takes. He's been in the ACC for so long. He can figure. He knows how to figure things out and prepare for every ACC team. I think playing teams like Stanford and Cal and SMU, who are new, will definitely benefit them as well. I would say six to seven wins. They're back in a bowl game, and you know, mid-tier bowl game that they could win um, under Dave Clawson. And maybe next year they have even more success. Now we got Bill O'Brien. Leaving the NFL for Boston College. Uh, the, the questions here is on the defense. They lose a lot on defense. They lost some guys to the transfer portal. The one thing they have returning that we talked about at the top of the show is Thomas Castellanos at quarterback. The dual threat quarterback. I don't want to call him a poor man's Jaden Daniels. That's not fair. Um. But if you can't stop Thomas Castellanos, you can't stop Boston College on offense. So Florida State needs to have an answer in week one for Boston College. Bill O'Brien will be ready to go and prepare this team to try to win that game, especially seeing what he saw Georgia Tech do to Florida State and a similar style of play with with this quarterback. They're going to be ready to go. Um, Outside of Florida State, I don't know. Thomas Castellanos has to stay healthy. He's had some injury issues. Uh, If he's not healthy, Boston College is in trouble. You know, they need to try to play for a bowl game. And if Thomas Castellanos is injured, they're not going to win a whole lot of games. Uh, Next up, we have Virginia. They have one of the toughest schedules in the ACC. Uh, this is year four under head coach Tony Elliott, and they were three and nine last season under Tony Elliott in year three. Um, their quarterback plays a little bit of a question between Calandria and Musket. It sounds like Calandria might get the most snaps, but they're both going to play in every game starting out until they have more answers. But Their schedule is so tough. Again, three to maybe four wins. I don't see them making a bowl game. Um, This does not help the ACC's cause with having a team looking this week on the bottom tier. Uh, Speaking of teams on the bottom tier, then you have Duke. Uh, They got portal. They were a victim to the portal galore. Part of that was obviously head coach leaves. What happens? You're going to get a lot of guys transfer out. Um, Riley Leonard, gone. Key pieces on defense, gone. Defensive coordinator, also gone, like we talked about already. Um, They're going to have some problems this year. They have a chance to maybe make it back to a bowl game, but with the pieces they lost, and they got Manny Diaz in there now, um, who's getting a second chance. He was at Miami and uh, kind of struggled and failed at Miami. And now, after being at Penn State, is now taking over and getting another chance in the ACC. He's a very good coach. He knows the ACC. He knows how to have successful defenses in the ACC. I just don't think it's going to happen in year one with everything they lost to the transfer portal. And he has to basically – rebuild Duke from the ground up. And it's very, very difficult to win at Duke for college football. Mike Elko was a badass and he knew he found a way to win at Duke. And that's why he's at Texas A&M now. Can Manny Diaz do it? We'll see. And then last we've got the Stanford Cardinal. Another one that the schedule does them no favors traveling all the way across the country Troy Taylor is one hell of a coach. He was running some very high-powered offenses at Stanford. 
or <laughs> at Sacramento State. He was running high powered offenses at Sacramento State. The issue being now, after being in the Pac 12 for one year and one of the best years ever, the Pac 12, with having Oregon, Washington, and now the Pac 12 blows up, they find a new conference. This new conference gives them one of the hardest schedules in the conference, flying all the way across the country. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of improvements on offense from year one to year two. He's starting to get a lot more of his guys in there that fit his style, fit his system. But you're now adjusting to a, essentially, if you count Sacramento State, this is his third conference in three years, going from the Big Sky, then to the Big Pac-12, and then now to the ACC, and then having the challenging schedule and the travel on top of it. Last year, they were... I believe three and nine in the ACC. And they might, or three and nine in the Pac 12, but then three and nine could be the outcome in the ACC as well. They, they're going to give some teams some fits and they're going to be a headache and that might make some teams look at, uh, they might get overlooked by some teams, is what I'm saying. But it's going to be a long year to be a Stanford Cardinal fan. Troy Taylor is the right coach for the job. But it's not going to happen this year. This is the team that probably will finish at the bottom of the ACC in year one. That's why I put them last year. Um, I mean, it's going to be either Virginia or Stanford as the last place team in the ACC. And I lean towards the new team in the conference with less experience and more travel. So that will do it for the ACC week zero recap and ACC season preview. Uh, we will preview the big 12 next in our conference preview series. Uh, coming up also this weekend, potentially Saturday. We might have a show live Saturday. I have to just get everything finalized, but we're aiming towards a Saturday morning uh, 10 a.m. live broadcast previewing week one and the best games from week one and my predictions. I'll put out some future plays there as well as my favorite bets for the week. Um, we'll talk about a handful of games Uh Join in on the chat as we're live, and we I hope to see you on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Tentatively, tentatively Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll get confirmation. I'll tweet it out when it is official. Um, but in the meantime, stay cool out there as we get another heat wave coming through the Midwest. Uh, I hope you enjoyed week zero. I thought it was an amazing way to start the season. And I'm really looking forward to week one with games kicking off on Thursday night. There's 31 games on Thursday night to start the college football season. 31. And then we have games on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we have a game on Labor Day Monday as well. Uh, until next time, I hope to see you all on Saturday. Peace.